Hi everyone, this is Sue Lynn Hago from Propagandy, and uh, I'm going to talk about the song uh, that got me into guitar. Um, I guess this whole thing's about what songs or riffs get you into guitar, but um, this song, uh, Holiday in Cambodia by Dead Kennedys, didn't really get me into guitar. I think collectively, like, just the MTV era with music videos and, and live shows. Kind of the metal and the punk stuff that showed up there got me into guitar, but this I said made a really big difference on how I viewed writing and even just feeling like, especially in like punk music, just expanding uh, kind of the range in which you play it, because a lot of punk just being, uh, a lot of it primarily being power chords. And, uh, um, I just found that this song did a lot more like even the beginning just um the fact that you know you have the bass kind of coming in with that uh, this kind of uh dramatic type of bass line and the guitar nowhere to be found just comes in with these cool <laughs> delayed smacky sounds and for me even that i would say that's the first known time that i'd even heard what a pedal was or an effect, um, and knowingly, um, not even knowing pedals existed when I heard that, just thinking, wow, that, that's just cool how that, the, the, the guitar, those notes are just bouncing and just felt like it was building up to something. And then, you know, when it goes to the build up, it just feels like, uh, it's, it's cool that it's driving. And I think it's, what's rad is that when the bass is kind of doing something different, like the two instruments, there's a lot of interplay where um, rather than feeling like you're just doing the same thing together at all times, um, just the layering kind of writing that um, East Bay Ray did, especially just the kind of surfy kind of punk stuff he did um, just really resonated with me. Um, and then when it comes in with that riff, yeah, that riff is just like... <laughs> stark and bleak where it sounds I guess if uh, more like fuller the way a lot of punk music um, was around that time but it's st it just still had this different edge and you know, kind of being in that surf style and um, and and just using a lot of those kind of notes that I thought were like considered like sour notes and and just kind of uh, so yeah it just kind of made an impression in terms of everything just being patient having a lot of restraint in the beginning of a song not kind of following what like the bass player uh, was doing and just like being able to kind of play more lead and uh, like melodic lines um, within a kind of punk band's kind of context. And what's cool is like, you know, that riff, the, the bass line riff that I when, I'm kind of, when finally the guitar joins it, there's like a satisfaction there. And I think like, it's like, you're kind of hoping that you could play it too, because it's such a good riff. And it's cool that it starts open. And then it closes out. And so it's like it, the song hushes and then Jello comes in. And there's, you know, I don't find like this kind of chugging playing some of the most fun stuff that I enjoy doing. And it's cool to do it with a cool group. So, and everything that's been, like, has been done so far on the guitar has just been extremely catchy um, and just feels feels like a build-up, you know? Like, already, who knows how many seconds into the song, but there's been, like, these noodly, like, weird kind of noise notes, these little spanky notes, I'll call them that. And then this riff, and then you join the, uh, the bass. It's just like kind of cramming a lot, but being really tasteful. And um, and it's just for me too, kind of growing up playing more than mostly getting my introduction into the guitar, playing more like power chord stuff. I just felt like wow, you can actually write like other shit. You could use other parts of the the fretboard that I kind of was ignoring for a bit, and just seeing how. East Bay Ray did it, it was a like really awesome um, and really inspired me. Which actually, like, even this part uh, that comes up um, actually after the, the main riff. It's kind of chords, you know, just even hearing, like, pretty sounding. It's four straight 
string chords that are higher end again playing power chords it's just like I never really this was like unknown territory for like when I was uh, starting out playing guitar playing mostly punk music uh, just seeing this thrown yeah. into a punk song was really cool and just like uh, just opened me up to like oh yeah I guess you know you can kind of use those it felt accessible without feeling like it sounded too pretty because it's still kind of like you know this darker sounding music so uh, it's just really awesome to have that dichotomy in a sense and also uh, yeah just the melodic um, sound of these cool chords <laughs> And then when it comes in with the, you know, it's just kind of right in your face, which is, uh, yeah, I think the guitar is just like kind of pushing like up front, back, up front, back a lot in this song. And it's just um, like, there hasn't been like a, almost something like a power chord yet. I mean, this is, I guess the closest thing, these octave chords, but everything's been really like, I think just, just restricting yourself from doing the kind of thing that's classic in the genre, I thought was really cool. You know? And I'm like, while well, I was learning the song back when I was like, I'd say like 15 or something, I'm like, well, like, when is it gonna show up? Like, when's it, there's gotta be a power chord, right? Um, and so it's rad to just think, uh, especially in a in a setup where it was just um, in terms of instruments, you know, bass, drums, and one guitar. One guitar carries a lot of weight. So it's just cool to feel like uh, you could still fill up all that space um, with more kind of lead playing rather than just always feeling like you have to play rhythm or, or fill up the space that big with power chords. Um, and then same thing kind of like with this part. You know, it's, it's just like a different way of playing like over those chord pieces. Substituting that, at least how it's how I saw it, I was just like, oh yeah, you could just kind of cover the high end while the bass is covering so much low end. So it just feels like, in terms of space and layering, that um, you're kind of you're just doing a little bit more rather than always hanging on the low end. It's kind of chord. On top of just kind of showing me like there's so much more you can do on the neck. Um, it's just the kind of noisy kind of stuff that happens in between. Like there's the the well the the solo kind of thing, and you know it's. It, to me, before there was Dick Dale, it was East Bay Ray, you know, he was kind of like my Dick Dale and, and it was like just hearing this kind of surfy guitar playing in a, like a, a punk band was just the coolest fucking thing. And then, uh, and then with this kind of solo that's like really reverbed out. <laughs> so awesome it's it's simple but it kind of it, it does it does what it's supposed to do and it just kind of uh just sounds kind of mean and just shrill the whole song is kind of a bit stark and i think all those kind of types of chords and and leads uh that east bay race doing really kind of um bring that type of uh, mood to the the song and um and even just the sound quality the fact that it's just kind of reverbed out you know, to this day, it's just something that I, I feel like um, is a part of kind of how how I write and play. Like, I, I love that kind of surfy sound. So it was definitely, when I heard it here, um, really inspired me. Like, I guess we have this power chord. I'm going to go back and go. The, the chorus. What's rad about this? Like, oh, fuck, finally a power chord. Like, you know, you're like, I, I, I need that. You know, it's been cool playing all this stuff. But you finally get, especially to the chorus, it's like, you know, it's a punk band, you want to hear a power chord. So I think it's it's really awesome to think that he's been kind of almost uh, like fluttering around playing it, playing up here, playing down here, playing these like nice pretty chords. And then he finally gives it to you in the part that matters, which is like, or that it all matters, but the chorus, you know, it just kind of gives it that much more power. And it's almost like uh, satisfying to finally hear it. So <laughs> too it just sounds like a like almost like construction or something that's like hammering down right what's rad about this chorus too that i thought was cool when i learned it 
you know, the first chord's a power chord, and then you go to the second one. I remember learning this and being like, well, that's kind of like a power chord. Power chord's usually like just these three, like they're all just sitting next to each other, but the third and fourth finger were just, you know, out one set of strings, a uh, string pair. So the same thing where it's like, it kind of had the essence of a power chord, but it just had this different thing that I, I hadn't heard before in like, in uh, punk music. And I just, that kind of shrillness, it adds a bit of that high end to a power chord that you don't really get. This sounds more compact. So I just, you know, it's just these kind of chord choices. I think that um, again, just changed my world in terms of how I was writing on the guitar, being like, you know, I was just kind of stuck on maybe some simple leads or maybe just power chords and being like, fuck, there's so much else to do. Um, so that was cool. It still has that kind of essence of a power chord. Um, yeah, so that kind of... Just through your two string ones, classic sounding thing, and just kind of that that back and forth stuff. Just everything he's doing. It, um, there's barely any strumming too. I think um, you know, and I've learned about myself as a guitar player. Like I, I definitely lean on the more kind of picking single note style of writing, and I think that's why this song kind of seeing that. Um, I like I couldn't tell the difference when I was younger. It was like okay, like if I like punk and metal, it's like well, you know, in punk it's it's all strong, you know, and then metal's very noodly kind of like, you know, stuff like that, and, and, but like, you know, in terms of the kind of, at least then, I was just mostly wanting to play, like, punk music, I felt like the noodles or like the, the big solos weren't something I wanted to do at the time, like, I still wanted to play, like, short punk songs, so I thought, when I heard learn this song, it felt like the balance. It was like, it was both kind of, it was the bridge between those two things where I'm like, yeah, I, I do find it a little bit more fun to kind of just do the, your single note things, but I'm not trying to do like a bunch of solos or kind of crazy riffs. You know, I still want to kind of feel like the way that power chords can, can really um, just kind of uh, keep the course, like keep everything on track, you know? And, um, and I thought he did it, East Bay Ray did it so well. Um, so even like, uh, so even a part like this where you could have just strum, just a simple, just making it a back and forth pattern, kind of like this one. It's just, uh, it's just a little bit more hyperactive and just have, you're almost like, uh, being able to play more lead sound sounding chords rather than just strumming. And I think for, you know, especially as a kid, I just like wanted everything kind of like fast, heavy. Um, it was like my hyperactive personality that like, you know, kind of got bored of just doing the power chords. I mean, it was fun, but I, it's like, I kind of wanted to like moving around. You know, I just wanted to kind of be a bit hyper with the right hand and the, or both hands, you know, uh, that just felt like the energy. And so it kind of captured that when, when you think about him playing, it's almost like, being hyper and having ADD. Like he's over here and then he's over, you know, and then he's over here. And then he's over here. And then he's over here. Sorry, is that getting boring already? Uh, yeah, it's just, just really just flying all over the fretboard. Um, and, but still, you know, uh, not feeling like it was too much. It was so awesome. Got me thinking differently. Got me introduced to chords that I'd never really seen before that I felt like now felt accessible in punk music. And um, and it's just like the kind of dark, dissonant, surfy sound. Some of these dissonant notes. Just all that stuff just sounding really um, awesome and gnarly. So thank you, Dead Kennedys. Thank you. East Bay Ray, you changed my world.